Hello everyone, first and foremost I would like to apologise for the fact that it has been so long since I last made a video like this, I can only apologise, like, honestly it's just been tech issues, um, time issues, just, just, just so many like things going on all over the place, but I apologise that you've not seen me in so long, but we're back, it is Feel Good Friday, it is Friday the 16th of June, and let's begin with the sign of the cross, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Friday, let's begin by chatting about the week we've just had with the people around us. Off you go. Nice one, I hope you enjoyed chatting about those things with each other. Of course, it wouldn't be Feel Good Friday without our Feel Good Friday quiz, so without further ado, let's get straight into it. Question number one. Unfortunately, on Sunday night, it did not come home when England came second um, in the football, but do you know who came third in the Euros? Was it Spain or Denmark? Question number two. On Monday, Prime Minister Boris Johnson confirmed that on Monday, social distancing will be relaxed in England. True or false? Question number three. What was last week's word of the week? Was it courage or wisdom? Question number four. Last Friday, Marvel Studios released the 24th film in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but what was its name? Was it Loki or Black Widow? And finally, question number five. True or false, this Friday is the last Friday of this academic year. And of course, that one is true. Now don't forget, this quiz is always just for fun, so don't worry if you've got them all right, all wrong, as long as you have fun along the way, that is what's important. Awesome, so this week, our word of the week is awesome. Um, it might sound like a little bit of a strange one, like how can awesome be a word of the week? Normally we have things that are like religious and stuff like that. Um, but actually, wonder and awe, which is where the word awesome comes from, um, is a gift of the Holy Spirit. Wonder being something that uh, you find amazing, if something's wonderful, it's full of wonder, and or being a feeling of respect that you get once you've experienced that wonder. Uh, so for example, you might go outside and you think, oh wow, the sky looks wonderful, it is so beautiful, and you're filled with wonder because of it. And then you think, wow, God made the sky, and I have so much respect for him. So that's kind of like how wonder and all works, and it's a gift of the Holy Spirit. So you remember all those weeks ago when the um, disciples received at Pentecost the gifts and fruits of the Holy Spirit? That was one of them. And with all of this in mind, this week our scripture is going to be taken from right at the beginning of the Bible in the book of Genesis. And it's a story of how God created the world. Now, I know when you're reading this, you might be thinking, but Will, come on, we know about evolution and all this stuff. Like, obviously the world wasn't made in seven days. Um, and that's fine, you're perfectly entitled to think that. Um, but I personally quite like to think of uh, this story as the seven ages of evolution, rather than necessarily the exact seven days um, like the world and the world as we know it was created um, in a week. I'm not unusual in thinking this, as you probably know from our read, a lot of Christians um, view uh, the evolution story and the creation story to be uh, tied in together like this, but I just wanted to let you know that it's okay to think that. As we're reading it today, I encourage you to think of each element as something incredible and wonderful and awesome uh, which God has created, and think about how we experience each of these parts in our lives each day. Just a little bit of a forewarning, it's quite a lengthy one, but if you close your eyes or really imagine each thing as it's being created, um, it will pass by fast and um, it will really help you get immersed more in the story. So this is a reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the universe, the earth was formless and desolate. The raging ocean that covered everything was engulfed in total darkness, and the Spirit of God was moving over the water. Then God commanded, let there be light, and light appeared. God was pleased with what he saw. Then he separated the light from the darkness, and he named the light day, and the darkness night. Evening passed, and the morning came. That was the first day. Then God commanded, Let there be a dome to divide the water, and to keep it in two separate places. And it was done. So God made a dome, and he separated the water under it from the water above it. He named the dome sky. Evening passed, and morning came. 
That was the second day. Then God commanded, let the water below the sky come together in one place, so that the land will appear. And it was done. He named the land Earth, and the water which had come together he named Sea. And God was pleased with what he saw. Then he commanded, let the earth produce all kinds of plants, those that bear grain and those that bear fruit. And it was done. So the earth produced all kinds of plants, and God was pleased with what he saw. Evening passed, and the morning came. That was the third day. Then God commanded, let lights appear in the sky to separate day from night, and to show the time when days, years, and religious festivals begin. They will shine in the sky to give light to the earth, and it was done. So God made the two larger lights, the sun to rule over the day and the moon to rule over the night. He also made the stars. He placed the lights in the sky to shine on the earth, to rule over the day and the night, and to separate light from darkness. And God was pleased with what he saw. Evening passed and the morning came. That was the fourth day. Then God commanded, Let the water be filled with many kinds of living beings, and let the air be filled with birds. So God created the sea monsters, all kinds of creatures that live in the water, and all kinds of birds. And God was pleased with what he saw. He blessed them all and told the creatures that live in the water to reproduce, and to fill the sea, and he told the birds to increase in number. Evening passed and the morning came. That was the fifth day. Then God commanded, Let the earth produce all kinds of animal life, domestic and wild, large and small, and it was done. So God made them all, and he was pleased with what he saw. Then God said, now we will make human beings. They will be like us and resemble us. They will have power over the fish, birds, and all animals, domestic and wild, large and small. So God created human beings, making them to be like himself. He created them male and female, blessed them, and said, Have many children, so that your descendants will live all over earth and bring it under their control. I am putting you in charge of the fish, the birds, and all the wild animals. I have provided all kinds of grains and all kinds of fruit for you to eat. But for all wild animals and for all the birds, I have provided grass and leafy plants for food. And it was done. God looked at everything he had made and he was very pleased. Evening passed and the morning came. That was the sixth day. And so the whole universe was completed. By the seventh day, God finished what he was doing and stopped working. He blessed the seventh day and set it apart as a special day because by that day he had completed his creation and stopped working. And that is how the universe was created. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So there we are, that is the story of creation and in my opinion it is something that really is awesome and something that we can really find wonder in. But I'm aware you've listened to me for a long time now, especially with that longer reading, so I would like you to have a chat. Turn to the people around you and ask each other, what is your favourite part of the world we live in? What is your favourite part of God's creation? Awesome, so hopefully you maybe found some new things out about the people around you and their favourite parts of God's creation. But now that you've done that, my task for you is to either draw or write about your favourite things in your planet. Hopefully you should have some spare place. If you don't, please just use a piece of paper and a pen. Use this time to celebrate how awesome and wonderful God's creation is. You might want to like write a poem or uh, write some descriptions about the things that you particularly love about a tree, for example. Um, there's no right or wrong way to do this, just as long as you're showing how awesome God's creation is. But please leave however long's left on this video left at the end of form time to make sure that we can end in prayer together. Last one, hopefully you enjoyed doing that, but as always, let's end now together with a time of prayer. So just relax and take a breath and acknowledge God's presence in the room. So of course this afternoon we have been thinking all about how awesome God's creation is. And I'd like to draw to mind um, that favourite thing of God's creation that you were thinking about earlier. Think about it and spend a moment to thank God for that thing now. Awesome. Secondly, you may or may not know this, but we are actually all called to look after God's creation, as it said um, in the reading we heard earlier. And so I'd encourage you to pray for each other, pray for um, activists, for world leaders, and the people who can really make a difference on this planet, which at the end of the day are me, you, and everyone else who lives here. Maybe say a prayer that we can work hard together to look after this planet and celebrate God's awesome creation.
And finally, I'd like to pick two or three people in the room who you would like to pray for in this final week of our term, our year together. You might want to pray that God can keep them safe, look after them and help them out with anything that you know is going on in their life over this next week. And just as God gave us the world, he also gave us a prayer. And so we're going to join all of our prayers together now this afternoon by saying together that prayer, the Our Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Nice one. Your mission is on your way home today to pick three things that you notice that are awesome about God's creation. But that is it for me today, guys. I hope you have an amazing weekend. And let's end with the sign of the cross. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. See ya!